yeah, it's been a uh, it's been an outstanding morning. Someone decided to doze off. So, <laughs> someone decided to not know where their phone is, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's all it's all good. We're here, ladies and gentlemen. After uh, missing a day, sorry about missing a day. I had to get some uh, uh, blood work done, and it did not go as smoothly as I had uh, wished it would. Anyways, hello, welcome to the Daily Cup of Genre here on the Genreverse Podcast Network and the YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel if you're watching us. Uh, follow us on your favorite podcast app if that's what you're you know, using to consume. Uh, I'm Kyle, that's Manny. Check out lrmonline.com every day for all uh, entertainment news, needs, and opinions, and uh yeah, big big story uh, today, I guess you would say. Uh, Patty Jenkins has responded to all of the uh, stuff from <laughs> mm-hmm. earlier dealing with uh, Wonder Woman 3. And uh, she uh, released a statement, excuse me, basically saying she, whoops, it's missing, of course it is, uh, basically saying she did not uh, walk away, that... Uh, well, let's 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 read it out. OK, so uh, she says uh, she's not one to talk about private matters, but she doesn't want inaccuracies being out there. Uh, she said when she originally she originally left Rogue Squadron after long and productive development, when it uh, became clear it wouldn't happen uh, without delaying Wonder Woman three. She didn't want to do that. So she said, hey, I'm going to go do this franchise thing that I'm already you know, invested in. They asked if she could come back later. She was like, sure. They made a new deal with her, according to her. Uh, and she says it, it has been an active development ever since. Oh, God. Uh, she also says, I don't know if it will happen or not, which is really weird to, to say. Uh, we never do until the development process is complete, but I look forward to its uh, to it potentially ahead. Um she also said the uh, 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 stuff with Wonder Woman 3 not happening, that the uh, attractive clickbait false story, which seems to be what the rap said, uh, which was uh, that she walked away, that she was like, hey, you know, you don't know what a char- character art is. Arkin is. Uh, she says, this is simply not true. I never walked away. I was open to considering anything asked of me. It was uh, it was my understanding there was nothing I could do to move anything forward at this time. DC is obviously uh, buried in changes they are having to make, so I understand these uh, decisions are difficult right now. Uh, I do not want what has been a beautiful journey with Wonder Woman to land on a negative note. And she goes on to give praise to uh, uh, working on, on the character and the films and, and things like that. The The weird thing about this for, for me, Manny, is uh, she said, I was open to considering anything asked of me. It was my understanding there was nothing I could do to move anything forward at this time. That still sounds like, to me... She and not that she walked away, but just this is the story she wants to tell. And they were like, well, that's not the story we want. And they said, OK, we'll we'll just that that's it. I mean, that, that's kind of what I'm hearing. What what are you hearing out, out of her statement? I'm hearing that they just didn't have a direction for Wonder Woman yet. And maybe she has other projects like any other director that she wants to work on, especially in the meantime. So um I, I didn't I didn't take that as a uh, as kind of a um, your story your story doesn't fit of fit us it's more I, I I think like like it happens a lot actually in in projects I think it's more timing than anything else it's like well when are we when are we planning on doing something and it's like I don't know well because they don't mm. um, that that's really how I take it more than anything else it's like there's nothing th- like see that because it said this said there's nothing I can do <clears throat> to move anything forward at this time and that's true man with the ask uh, consider I guess what kind of throws me off is considering anything they they asked of me but your your line of thought also tracks real well neither one of them is sounds like a uh a pissing match or a or a hissy fit as a, well, as a matter of fact i was gonna say gun uh said that uh i can attest that all of peter 
Saffron and my interactions with you to uh, Jenkins were only pleasant and professional. So anyways, carry on. Manny. No, yeah, that's exactly actually exactly what I was going to say oh. that <laughs> Gun had actually responded in and, same page <laughs> and um, spoke to 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 the professor because like, I, I don't I don't know. Like I, I told you what I, well, I think I don't know if I said it on air or not, but I told you really what I thought of of um of some of these stories i think that when hollywood reporter came out with theirs that was really really fantastical and 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 very uh very animated as far as the, what's going on right now behind the scenes at dc um the rap the very next day came out with with their own uh additions to that fantastical story and what's actually happening because they have to be the ones to to break a story like this or or to also have their piece of the pie and um what ends up happening is you then you end up with like kind of like what uh gun said in a tweet over the weekend it was like some of it's true some of it may be true mm -hmm. and then a lot of it is not um and <laughs> i really feel right now real really feel for he uh, heck Jake jenkins for gun for anyone working behind the scenes and trying to put together dc because um because like people are overreacting to anything they hear and um yeah it, it's a it's actually kind of it's kind of actually kind of annoying at this point um i mean sometimes we we also talk about some of these things that we hear as a rumor mm -hmm. um only necessarily because it, it's floating around and hey this is actually this is what yeah. this is what people are saying um but it is it is i think uh i i i I, I I think it's. I mean I mean Hello. Often, so, so often, do do we hear things from from sources, and we talk about it behind the scenes, mm -hmm. with with each other, and some and sometimes it and and sometimes it almost may, we we're we're pretty sure it's almost a hundred percent right, and we still decide not to run it. We we we, we will just sit on it and say hey, yeah and you know what it's not. And is then it, bitch not about not it. running it later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cam basically, has, Cam has um, done that several times. Yeah, but um, because, because you got you got you got to think about relationships, and you got to think about kind of the reputation that you want to have, and and obviously, um, there are some sites up there who just really don't care, um, or big enough where they can put something up, they can just shrug their shoulders, and nothing ever happened, and then you have, you know, like a filmmaker like Jenkins having to put out this really long statement of something that never happened yeah and then also like um it, it's kind of it's kind of crappy because um something that we don't do especially in news journalism is we don't try to one of the rules at our station was no anonymous sources <laughs> mm. and i understand that in entertainment it's a little bit diff more difficult because you yeah. get fired easily like but politics too but also uh, but also it um there's no accountability, no accountability for for me to to just say that um, in a meeting, Patty Jenkins punched a uh, gun in the face and and later Excuse got it later got a call from uh, from Zasloff and, and to, to say that she was fired. That's what my sources told me. Like, <laughs> how, like how how like crappy is that that I could just I can say that and it not be true. Yeah. And it can it can gain steam and um and if it's on the right yeah. platform right right uh site or or youtube channel yeah because while not, while a lot of this stuff isn't as extreme it's in the same vein because she's had to come out and say none of it is true mm. <laughs> so um I, I it's it's annoying i i find it more than anything else as far as like um oh yeah this is you know this is and and like they push it so hard too <clears throat> Once they do release the information, that I, I just um, I, I just kind of <laughs> want to go away, and I'm, I was starting to even think last night, uh, especially with some of the reactions from fans in general across the two percent that is social media, um, <laughs> uh, that's like man, like like some of these DC fans are probably the, some of the most toxic people as far as a fandom that i've ever seen if it's not their way it's like it's like we're gonna we're, we're not gonna go watch it we're not gonna do this we're, we're not whatever um 
Meanwhile, on the other you know side of the pond, Marvel fans, you can feed them whatever they want, and they're just oh god, and they're and like, this is the best thing it. ever. <laughs> Nick, looking at you. So, so yeah, that's um that that that's my uh, two cents on on this whole thing. Yeah, no, it's a it's a shitty situation, and just how messed up DC is that uh, I can't remember if it was uh, Screen Rant or. Um, God, one of those one of those other sites kind of like kind of like ours in between trade and and random Joe uh, random Joe's blog. But uh, um, they were saying that a hard DC reboot is necessary now. And I'm like, I don't see that happening, though, guys. I don't I don't see them just jettisoning everything but it is so messy so messy right now and you you have those four movies coming out next year they're not gonna they're not gonna tank those and i don't see them releasing them and then saying oh none of that mattered here's you know starting point from from this point forward uh and and <laughs> i know we as a society have be, have gotten uh much shorter attention spans these days but I don't think it's that short that you can start all of these things over um, again. Uh, yeah, man, it's it's interesting situation. I'm I'm not sure what to what to make of all what to make of all of it. Um, well, we, we hopefully need to make they out figure of it, it out. Is that they're figuring it out? I've I've said it a, mi a million times. It just takes time. You're they're trying to create a ten year plan that that's spreading across video games movies and television mm -hmm. that's not easy to do that's not but that's not something that can that can happen very easily and people just need to be patient you're gonna get news when it's ready not yeah not when it's a rumor let me ask you this though and i think we've somewhat touched on it uh before is there time like we we know that we we know how we feel about um we know how we feel about Marvel stuff right now because of Phase Four. Um, I don't know if it's a hundred percent comic book movie fatigue or not, but it sure as hell looks a lot more like it than it's ever in the past. Especially if you throw in Black Adam with that. Um, in and it makes me wonder: Is there time for a ten-year plan? Is there time? for uh this this new dcu going forward to actually be established or do you think we actually have entered finally and what doesn't matter whose fault it is whether it's snyder verse or phase four do, do you think we're, we have finally entered comic book uh movie fatigue nope i don't, don't think, think so, so. <clears throat> no i think i i kind of i see it in the same vein and and i had never kind of thought of it that way until um uh it was it was explained this way um what was it called um uh quentin tarantino when he talked about how the this generation of audience members have been kind of um conditioned conditioned to franchises mm -hmm. that's that's one of the big reasons why i i do believe <clears throat> they'll be fine superman is one of the most popular superheroes if not the most popular su superhero just surpassing spider-man based on a study i saw um this was earlier in the year it might have changed already but <clears throat> yeah but according to a couple of studies superman is still superman for a reason so um if, if you follow kind of a gun set of superman being the most important piece of <clears throat> of dc I, I think that um no it's it's gonna be fine er, 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 these characters are timeless these characters have been around since what the 30s and 40s since um and beyond yeah. um and in different mediums whether it was first comic books radio television film and i think they're going to continue on and um i and i i think that if they need to take another couple of months to put it together they need to take a couple months to put it together but uh i i think that they're just going to be a little bit more a little bit more smart with it i i i while some of the decisions they've made have been very unpopular, mm -hmm. um, Zaslav and his team are doing whatever they can to try and make 
this all work as a business not as a uh people pleaser because like mm -hmm. uh like I, james dunn said can't please everyone you can't and you never will nope. and if you think and if you and if that's what you strive for you're gonna fail every time miserably yeah so, uh definitely but if there's somebody who's been able to take obscure characters but have good storylines and have really good vision to what those characters could be it's been gone if there's somebody who has had a successful franchise saffron has done it with with the conjuring universe because that's been one of the most profitable franchises ever it, well mostly because also they don't cost that much to make but the popularity of those films like you you have like people like uh really going to the theater to go watch the nun uh because mm -hmm. because you know it's part of a franchise you have to go watch it yeah um and that was kind of my thought on you know tarantino's stuff still being true but getting away from the uh the capes i mean i could see more uh sandman style comic book adaptations but i i seriously wonder if we'll even say it's phase four and and snyderverse fatigue i really wonder if that's going to play into it i think i keep pushing off the the idea of of what movie will really show us whether or not there's there's fatigue and really we we can't tell because we haven't at least especially from marvel we haven't gotten that movie you know no way home being the last movie to be that movie uh i keep you know saying well maybe it'll be thor love and thunder no there was lots of controversy and and discourse about whether or not that was good maybe it'll be black panther wakanda forever it was overwhelmingly supported of course but a lot of people were were not as enthusiastic as they were for the first film even even discounting or not not counting uh the recast situation just the movie itself people had their their issues they had their likes so it's like okay still can't tell because there's enough people complaining that the the lukewarm reception makes sense so, so what is what is the next thing to let us really know and and how many movies have to not perform well in theaters for us to uh for us to finally say okay yeah it is it's it's fatigue and whether whether it's just too much or just too much bad in a, in a row i i keep pointing out that the the things with the biggest draw are these 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 nostalgic things and and that scares me because you know we we got a multi multiverse situation on both sides and you might just end up with nothing but crap from the 80s 90s and and 2000s shoved into this this stuff to keep it alive while re rebooting and 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 soft sequels uh um to things from ghostbusters top gun and and so on and so on those those will get made because there are there's a lot of franchises out there to to play around with that aren't uh comic books i i don't know man it's it's a weird situation and i i hate that i'm so disappointed in marvel i miss enjoying i miss that more marvel feel in theaters and i just don't get it anymore <laughs> oh well uh we can still talk about something on on the dc side i know cam wrote this up but uh you and i have both been uh pretty excited about this movie the official blue beetle synopsis is out well um, um, yeah before you do that though i do want to oh, sure. say that i a hundred I, that i um while i agree with you that some of the marvel stories ha are have been you know kind of lackluster i do disagree with you as far as uh, fatigue in theaters i just think theaters in general are just suffering um I thought the bat, you know, seeing what the Batman numbers are, seeing what Thor, Thor's numbers mm -hmm. are, um, and even Black Panthers, I think that's just kind of the new norm of what we're going to see. Yeah, the but... only film that we've seen really to be able to break that mold recently was um, Top Gun. Top Gun, and that's it. And everything, no <laughs> everything else has been Both kind of, rude. kind of at at that at the mercy of of five, six, six hundred million. Uh, mm -hmm. at best but we don't have certain markets in the past year year and a half that were able to give you those kind of those more fantastic numbers of, uh, to to bolster yeah i mean um to to bolster you know theater views but 
it's also like we've talked about when people are just willing to wait now because yeah. i hear a lot of great things about certain movies that they just didn't go see in theaters and and, and i think that that just plays a huge it's playing a huge role in in i think the decisions going forward but it's not i don't think it's a it's it's um people not willing to watch the movies um it's people willing to wait to watch the movies um and i mean yeah we we we're going kind of also go through a tough time as a country and so you, you pick and choose a little bit more as far as what you're going to go see in theaters and um it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's a franchise or not yeah they're going to get the best response but a, as a whole you, you know you you have you have a regal this year having to uh cinder world having to uh, file for bankruptcy and and other smaller theaters having to shut down and, and regal having to switch from coke to pepsi that was ridiculous. such a great thing for me so i loved it stupid, uh thank you Regal, for doing that because pepsi, pepsi is, is trash pepsi is gold you know that's why they've always had better commercials too um screw you man coke's got the freaking uh christmas polar bears oh, right get that get they have my uh pepsi and michael jackson you guys have pepsi man right? shut yeah, up no uh, <laughs> whatever man it, it was pepsi's always been better no. so um drink rc before i drink pepsi ew what, whatever that crap is yeah no. Ro royal crown come on now anyways um yeah uh top gun and and no way home they they share that that nostalgic a aspect and uh like i said that's one of my big fears cool because like what is like what is transformers or fast and the furious going to do without china Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fairly certain those ones, unless China keeps, <laughs> like I like I've told others, it's it's not just them picking and choosing because something's spiritual, religious, or or supernatural. It's not them uh, uh, ignoring because of minority things. While that that does happen, China China statistics are uh, strategically picks which Western movies to allow to maximize their uh, uh, profits for their theaters, of course, but also as a as a way of economic warfare. <laughs> I mean, they don't need us. They, they got China's put out a few movies that were the top grossing worldwide uh, because of their market al alone. Um, they don't need the Western uh, theater uh, movies, but they can hurt western studios and and china does have their own suit it's a it's a chinese uh uh company that owns uh legendary we were talking about legendary pictures last week uh it's a uh the parent company's a chinese uh conglomerate or corporation whatever c word you you want to use um and uh uh of course they want to hurt competition so if they can figure out a way now where, where they're working with with sony and uh, Warner Brothers has a movie coming out around the same time. China can legitimately say no to the Warner Brothers movie, no to the to the uh, Disney uh, Marvel's Lucasfilm movie, and say yes to the Sony movie. And now they've they've just used and abused the system. So yeah, it's man, they they can do anything they they want, and it it might not make sense to to everyone on there. But once you realize how many pies china has their fingers in it'll make sense that on on anything not not being released there because it hurts someone else period yep um anyways blue beetle man the the official synopsis is out for that did you read through it yet uh a little bit it's kind of generic it is very generic and that's what i wanted to ask you about so let me uh read this for for the audience that aren't on youtube uh, recent college grad, uh, uh, Hamie Reyes, 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 Jesus, uh, returns home played by, uh, uh, Jolo from, uh, Cobra Kai returns home full of aspirations for his future only to find that home is not quite as he left it. 
as he uh, searches to find his purpose in the world, fate intervenes when he unexpectedly unexpectedly finds himself in possession of an ancient alien uh, relic of alien biotech, the Scarab. Uh, when the Scarab suddenly chooses him to be its uh, symbiotic host, he is bestowed with an incredible suit of armor capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers forever, changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero Blue Beetle. Uh, yeah, man, super generic. It's a it's a standard issue uh, uh, origin story. Uh, I'm digging the the idea that he is. Uh, um, post college like he's in his early 20s mm -hmm. you know heading into mid 20s i i dig that because it offers it just offers a little bit more to do than a, another high school tale which we've we've seen many many times in in many different uh uh formats spider-man <laughs> uh what do you what do you think man besides it being being bland does it give you any concerns or is it just like eh they just wanted something out there uh i'm just kind of I, I wish he would have been in college um i think it uh, the market college would have been fine too I'm, yeah. as long as it wasn't high school you know like high school it's it's done by everyone and i i think him and him some sort of program in college would have would have been a little bit better um and then other than that like whatever like this really tells me nothing so um it almost makes me like, wonder it's like oh zolo's playing jaime reyes he gets a scarab Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we already knew that. Like, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing here really to, to react to. <laughs> it almost. Uh, who's the writer of 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 that movie? Um, Blue Beetle movie writer Gareth. I can't. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name. L A L C O C E R. Um. How old is this person? Because <laughs> the idea of coming home uh, from college and not really knowing what you uh, want to do f next, I don't see a, I don't see a uh, age on here any anywhere. Um, sounds very much like a uh, uh, young millennial <laughs> type thing. You know, you mm -hmm. you think about all the. Uh, um, people from our generation that had to move back in with with parents and you hear hear a lot about that that of course with some some gen z cats as as well um that whole like you said it would have been cool to have them in college but for you it's like you know post post college going going back home i'm, I'm wondering if there's some uh if there's some uh crossover in reality there um i don't know what i mean in the in the comics uh where is the like characters like best stuff is it because i know this is one version of the blue beetle and he's he's a relatively young character even in the comics uh was it was it high school heavy in the comics was it co college heavy in the comics what i mean how does this look like it's adapting no well, the best iteration of jaime reyes is in young justice mm. um so i think it's high school okay um if i'm not wrong there's a whole arc about his scarab and kind of Kind of the mythology behind it and um it's done really really well uh that is where i would say is his best stuff okay. it's cartoons <laughs> in my opinion. always man cartoons are are great that's why we watch so much of them here on the genreverse i mean specifically anime but that is still a uh a cartoon did you have any other stories on on doc today man i i don't really have anything else well the new scream trailer's out and i still haven't and i haven't watched it i'll tell you that new what trailer the new scream trailer they already finished filming six Jeez. yeah it, it um uh, they um i got the email this morning and um yeah the screen screen four trailer is now available what do you mean four sorry six <laughs> I was like, wait, did I just travel in time? No, I was, re no. I was like, no, I was reading something else and I didn't, I read what I was looking at. I saw the, uh, Spider-Verse trailer as well. That was, um, meh. Like it looks really cool, but it's so all over the place. And I didn't really get a, a sense of, of narrative. You, it, it, I don't know necessarily that what the the mom is saying and and uh, what happens in the trailer 
other than the whole take care of the the baby boy within you it's it's like and then showing him in, in a in a crazy situation it's just i don't know it just felt kind of messy i, I dug the first teaser with uh gwen coming in into miles's room and and inviting him out that was kind of cool and like like i said it looks cool it looks good uh visually of course did you see it no i haven't seen it like honestly that i think that movie is gonna be another mess just because like the success of the first one it's gonna be like okay we need to add like 100 more characters in this one. Oh, there's and, a lot of yeah. Sp spider-man so, in it. it's gonna <laughs> um you know it's one of those things where it's like okay since they like that one thing we're gonna do it we're gonna do it again but like a hundred times more that's a sony that's a sonyism for you yeah so anyways um i guess that'll do it for for us then today guys uh hopefully we'll be uh back tomorrow to discuss more uh news and and uh entertainment topics or whatever manny and i uh want to discuss uh check out um more shows here on the genreverse podcast network and youtube channel we've got uh anime reactions and reviews star wars news and uh uh reviews marvel reviews uh and breaking geek radio kind of does what we do here but for over an hour and a half generally and on fridays only uh all of our uh reviews and and news podcast type things go up on all of the big popular apps like spotify and stitcher and apple and all that and of course all uh written articles uh go up over at lrm online uh lrm online.com as well as uh celebrity interviews from the lrm youtube channel anything else to say many uh no not really just um be freaking patient god damn it like no like it's like i don't i don't understand what the what like some people want like it's like and also um snyderverse is never coming back you should just like do something more productive with your life go save the whales or something i don't know all righty bye guys <laughs>